Welcome to lecture 4i, Snooping Based Cache Coherence. We have seen about what is the significance of cache coherence and what do you mean by memory consistency problem in the last video. In this video and the next, we are going to see about two classes of cache coherence problem. To begin with, we are talking about Snoop Based Cache Coherence. So, consider the scenario where you have multiple processors that are there, they have their own cache memories and they use a shared common main memory. So, in this case, each processor is executing its own task with fetching locally from its own cache memories and upon miss, it goes to the shared main memory. Now, in this case, what if this processor is going to work upon some shared data? So, since the processors are working parallel, Potentially, the operations that these processors do on the shared data and if they are not streamlined according to the memory consistency models that we have seen, that can lead to incorrect execution. So, the whole class of cache memory problems revolves around how do you deal with these kind of problems where multiple processors are trying to access a shared data. Consider the case of a symmetric multiprocessor design given in this diagram where we have many processors 1, 2, up to n. They have their own cache memories and there is a common system bus through which the shared main memory is being accessed. So, who will access the bus is been determined by the bus arbiter. So, the next class of problems that we are going to discuss is basically assuming an architecture that is been given in this diagram. So, consider the case let us say you are going to write something on the cache. So, you have a processor that has been given and then you have a value x at the same value that is there in memory. So, in short the value which is there in memory was loaded into the cache. So, the x that is located in memory and the same variable x that is located in the cache are same. So, this is the scenario. Now, let us consider what happens if it is a write through cache. We have already learned what are the different types of caches in which write through and write back are the two broader categories that will distinguish the cache based upon a write hit. So, when processor performs an updation on the variable x, let us say the value x will become x dash, it is updated in the main memory also same time using a communication from the cache to main. These are known as write through caches and coming to write back what happens when processor performs a write, it makes the modification only in the cache and the main memory and the cache are not updated. When will we do that? When this particular cache block where the modification happened that is called the dirty cache block, when that is being evicted out, we perform an operation known as write back on eviction. This is the basic difference. So, in this case cache and memory are concurrent, in this case cache and memory are not coherent. Now, let us try to understand what do you mean by cache coherence problem. Consider the following events, consider the case that you have four processors P1, P2, P3 and P4 assuming all are empty for the time being and then we have a main memory and we are going to talk about a shared location called as A. So, now P2 reads A since P2 is empty initially then it is going to read it is just considered as a read miss. So, the bring the value of A into P2. So, now it is located in the local cache of P2 that is called read miss and fetch A from main memory. After that, P3 performs a read. So, P3 is also encountering a read miss. So, the value is being taken from main memory and it is put in P3. That is a local copy of P3. So, it is a read miss, fetch the value from A. Now, imagine P2 wanted to write into A. So, we have already learned that when there is a case where the processor wanted to perform a write operation, if it performs the tag comparison in the assigned cat set and if the tag is matching, that means it is a hit it is a write hit. So, what would you do? When there is a write hit, you make the modifications there in the cache itself. So, in this particular example, we know that P2 wanted to perform a write, it is a write hit. So, the updation happens in the local copy. Imagine after that, P3 wanted to read the value of A. So, when P3 performs the reading, it is a read hit. So, it will read the value of A that is locally available. But you have to understand just prior to that, the value of A was updated by P2, which in no way P3 will come to know. So, can we say that when P3 reads A, is it really a read hit? Because even though the copy is that is locally available in the cache memory of P2, it is same as A, 
but then that a value is not correct. So, how do will p 3 will get the latest value of a that is a challenging question. So, this is known as a cash coherence problem. The method by which p 3 is not going to read the stale value of a or p 3 get an updated value of a how to ensure that that is being done with the help of coherence management in the memory. Now, with the same example that you have seen Cache coherence on the shared bus you have two different choices. The first one is known as a write update choice. So, whenever you perform a write you broadcast the new value of a on the bus by the p2. So, p2 is the one who write and all other caches or all other processors since they are all connected by a same shared bus that is been shown if they are going to continuously observe or snoop the cache then whenever p2 writes a is updated in the main memory at the same time the value of a is propagated in the bus. So, anybody who reads the bus will get the latest copy of a. So, I will repeat once again write update is a mechanism where any write that you perform on a local cache in this case p 2 will perform a write on a then this write the written value the latest updated value is propagated through the bus. So, the main memory is updated or anybody who wanted to get the latest copy of a they are also getting updated to facilitate this every processor need to snoop into the shared memory that we are talking about that in this case it is a shared bus that you have. The second operation or the second choice by which you can facilitate coherence is called light invalidate. So, whenever there is a write operation that you do broadcast an invalidation message with the address of a. So, p 2 has to say that I am going to write on a then anybody who is snooping on the cache in this case p 3 knows that p 3 also holds a copy of a p 3 will invalidate whatever local copy of a p 3 will understand at this point of onwards whatever value that I have in my local copy it is stale because somebody else is writing. So, I will invalidate that. So, it is invalidate its local copy of a. Similarly, the copy of the main memory is also not updated anymore. So, in this case p 2 will continuously write on a everybody else will invalidate their copy if they have main memory also do not have the latest copy any time this block is evicted out then main memory will get this one. So, the first is updating the latest value and propagating through the bus second one telling all others that I am writing. So, you please invalidate your local copies. So, in short we have learned about two different approaches by which cache coherence can be done one is the update mechanism the second one is the invalidate mechanism. Now, in the same kind of a setup that we will see how are you going to do the invalidation process. So, initially consider the case that p 1 and p 3 holds a value of x which is same as that of main memory that is the initial state. Now, what happens if it is a going to be a write through cache then in an invalidate mechanism an invalidation message is being sent. So, p 3 will invalidate its copy. So, initially it was x now it is invalid and since it is write through main memory is being updated with the content the latest content x dash is been available in the local cache. At any point in time if p 3 wants the value of x if you look here it is invalid or the value of x is not available go to main memory and bring it back that is the way how it is been done. So, when you perform a write invalidate protocol on a write through cache any write that you locally perform an invalidate message is been sent through the bus and everybody else who is listening to the bus if the address is matching then an invalidation operation is done at the same time since it is write through main memory is updated. If it is a write back cache what is the difference the invalidate message goes. So, p 3 will invalidate its local copy whereas, p 1 is going to work with the local copy itself. So, p 1 only holds the latest value this updation would not happen between processor or the local cache and uh, the main memory updation would not happen this will happen only if this is evicted out. So, till eviction main memory and the local cache copy are not consistent at all. So, this is the broader difference here x dash is updated whereas, in this case main memory is not updated with the latest value. Now, coming to a write update mechanism like what we have mentioned let p 1 and p 3 holds a value of x which is consistent with the value that is available inside main memory. If it is a write through cache and if it is a write update mechanism rather than sending an invalidation request the updated value of x that is x equal to x dash that has been propagated into the bus and p 3 also get the latest copy and since it is a write through mechanism main memory also gets the latest value. So, after this point since it is write through main memory get updated 
since it is write update, other cash copies also get updated. So all the three, if you look at all these three, are going to have the same x dash value. If I am going to work with the write back cache, then we have to understand that the latest copy of that one will never be available in main memory because the moment you perform a write, the write is strictly local, but the pro value is propagated through the bus from one processor to another. Typically, we have to assume this transition is much, much faster than compared to this update. So, main memory is not updated, whereas the two local copies of cache held by P1 and P3 respectively, they will get the updated value because it is a write update operation on a write back cache. Let us now learn about snooping protocols. So, snooping protocols are nothing but various processors and their corresponding cache memory controllers part of a same system, they are going to continuously snoop or check, continuously checking in the bus. And the coherence mechanism that is built upon this model where every cache memory controller is snooping a shared bus that is known as snoopy cache protocols. In this case, any transaction that you do, any operation that is being done on a lock by a local cache controller, you have to broadcast this message in the bus so that everybody else will also be able to know what is happening and they may do some operation if it is relevant to them. So, all caches will snoop on these broadcasts. So, consider this model. This is the model in which a snoop based system will work. All the cache memory controllers are going to work with a single shared bus and all these caches will be connected to processors. So, when the processor perform a local read or write operation, they will broadcast this message into the cache. So, all caches can snoop these broadcasts and all messages are essentially broadcast messages. Now, if somebody is snooping, in this case cache 2, 3, 4 are snooping, based upon what they observe during the snooping process, based upon the response of a snoop that you do, you perform coherency commands. So, each block in the cache as well as in the main memory, there is a state that is associated with it. Each block is associated with a state. Now, what does this state say? This state determines what all operations are to be done to use the block. Let us say I wanted to perform a read or a write operation. So, if you wanted to perform a read or write operation prior to the concept of cache coherence, when you talk about one processor and its cache levels, if it is a read hit or a write hit, you can perform the corresponding operation. But in this case, if you wanted to perform an operation, even though it is a hit, you have to look at the state of the cache and depending upon that, you may need to sometimes broadcast a message and then only you are permitted to perform this corresponding operation on this cache block. So, it is not only about getting a hit, it is also knowing that the state associated with the cache gives you enough privileges to carry the operation. That is an additional step that we do when we work with the coherence protocols. So, the state of a block might change as a result if when there is a read miss or it is a write miss or it is a write hit. So, typically during a read hit, there will not be much change in the state of the block. But whenever there is a read miss or a write miss or a write hit, then the cache block is going to change. So, in short, what we have learnt here, when you are going to talk about multiple processors and their cache controller snooping on a single shared bus, any activity that one cache controller do based upon the local request from the processor, they need to broadcast into the bus, the bus is snooped by others. So, the other cache controllers will come to know what is the activity that has been happening or triggered by one cache controller and accordingly, if this particular activity that has been currently propagating or broadcasting through the bus, if it is relevant to this particular local cache, then they will make necessary changes. Typically, changes happens and how this has been, the whole process is done, every cache block and the corresponding block in the main memory, they are all associated with a state. And it is the state will tell you whether are you eligible or are you permitted to do any operation on the cache, be it a read or a write operation. And the state keep on changing. The change happens in the states during a read miss, a write hit or a write miss. Now, snooping protocols are also of two types. One is known as write invalidate protocol. CPU requesting to write to an address. First, you have to grab the bus cycle and send a write invalidate message in the bus. So, all snooping cache will invalidate their copy of the appropriate cache line. I am going to perform a write on location A, which is local copy to me. So, I have to grab the bus and send that all of you invalidate the block A. 
So everybody else who is snooping on block A will perform this invalidation operation. So CPU write it to cache to copy. So what happens is write through cache is done. So it is writing through the main memory also. So CPU will perform the write on the local copy after sending this invalidation request. So everybody who keeps the copy will invalidate. Any shared read in the other CPUs will now miss in the cache. The moment the invalidation happens, hereafter if a re-reference to that particular block will result in a miss in the cache and you have to refetch the new data just like a normal cache miss from the main memory. Going to write update, the CPU requesting to perform the write grabs the bus cycle and it broadcasts the new data as it updates its own copy. So you perform a write on the local cache and then you broadcast the update value. That is the thing that has been done. So all snooping caches now will get the update. So previously it was A, that keeps a copy of A. A was made to A dash by the local processor that has been propagated. So the A dash value has been sent across bus and everybody else will see that the new value of A is A dash and they will make their local copy of A to A dash. So the problem of simultaneous write is taken. So now think of a case, in the case of a bus arbitration, how do you do that? Two processors should not write. So, problem of simultaneous write has to be handled by a mechanism known as bus arbitration. If more than one processor wanted to write at the same time, first they have to grab the bus. So, a bus arbitrator circuit will take care of that. Only one CPU can use the bus at any given point in time. Now, is update protocol good or invalidate protocol good? Update looks the simplest one, it is an obvious one, but it is very fast as well because the latest copy is being propagated into the other caches. Invalidate scheme is usually implemented when we use a write back cache. So think of a case, multiple writes to the same word. So you are going to have a word where I am going to make something like A++. I am going to increment the value of A. So let us A be a word inside a cache block. So multiple write to the same word A in this case and I am not going to read this A either by this processor or any other processor need only one invalidation. So, the moment I am going to perform a write on A, the processor which initiated the write will send an invalidate message. So, all others will invalidate the cache block A. But if you are going for an update process, every time you update A, the new value of the A has to be propagated. So, now look into what happened here. We are now asking a question of whether an update protocol is good or an invalidate protocol is good. The update looks obvious that it is good because the latest value that you are getting, it is fast, it is reaching the other processor quickly. But when you come to an invalidate scheme, it is typically used in the case of a write back cache. Now imagine the case that you have to perform multiple writes on a same block. I am keeping on incrementing the value of something or the value of the same block get updated, whereas no other processor is going to read. So the moment I am going to update my value, this value I am going to tell invalidate. So, all others who have the copy, they will invalidate this value. Thereafter, if they want, it is a read miss, go to main memory and get it. But the moment I invalidate others, any subsequent read that is any subsequent write that I do, in this case, I am going to talk about a scenario where multiple frequent writes are there with no intervening read. So, all these are now my local affair. I have invalidated the block and then no other invalidation that is to be required. But had it been an update, when my value of A, which was initially 0, will become 1, an update goes. Later it becomes 2, another update goes. Becomes 3, another update goes. So any number of writes that you continuously do, constant writes, with no intervening read in between, update is a very, very costly affair, whereas invalidate requires only one message. Now consider the case that write to the same block in a multi-word cache. So I am going to write into the adjacent words also block require only one cache invalidate. So, this is point is talking about I continuously update the same word whereas in this case I am going to talk about adjacent words in the same block. Here also I require only one invalidate if it is an invalidate protocol but it requires multiple updates I am going to talk about an update protocol. So, bus bandwidth is a very very costly resource in shared memory multiprocessors. Invalidate protocol significantly uses less bandwidth. So, that is another kind of a trade-off that we are talking about. Now consider the case like I am going to talk about some states. Let us say I am talking about three states, modified state, shared state and invalidated state. 
Now, what happens in this case? CPU side messages. Initially, the blocks all are invalid. Whenever there is a read, then I will perform an operation. I will make a bus transition. So, this has to be read. This is the operation and this is what you put it in the bus. So, when I put A slash B, A is the operation upon which B is the event that is being broadcasted into the bus. So, a read operation happens. I am telling there is a read request. So, the block was invalid. It moves to shared. In the shared, whenever I get a read request and as long as it is shared, I continue in the share. Nothing is broadcasted. Now, I need to evict out a block. So, what happens? The shared value will become invalid, the shared state. Now, in this case, I am going to perform a write operation. Initially, it is invalid. I encounter up a write miss. Then, that request has been put into bus, broadcasted. So, from invalid, it is going to become in a modified state. When we are in modified state, that means the cache block is dirty. Any read request or write request comes, nothing is being broadcasted in the bus. It is a local transaction that happens. Similarly, upon evict from modified, it is going to become invalid. So, what is this transition all about? You are already in the shared state and then there is a write request. So, I broadcast and I am moving from shared state into the modified state. So, what we see is cache blocks as I mentioned can be in modified state, in shared state or in invalid state. Like already mentioned, every cache block would be one among these states. And now CPU side messages, CPU is going to access cache either for a read operation or for a write operation. So, when you perform a read operation and the block in which you have to perform the read, if it is already invalid, if it is a read, you move to shared state. If you wanted to perform a write, then you move to modified state. Now, upon shared state, CPU wanted to perform a read operation on a block which is already in shared state, I can simply perform. There is no state change in it, nothing is broadcasted. But if I wanted to perform a write operation on a block which is already in the shared state, I cannot do the write as long as I am in shared. I have to change my state to modified. In modified, any read or write, I will continue in the same state. In modified, let us say there is a miss that is occurred and I wanted to move out, then it is an eviction. So, eviction from shared to invalid, nothing has been done. Eviction when it is happening in modified state, that means it is a dirty block. I have to write back the block. So, I will tell others I am writing black and then the value has been invalidated. Now, if you look into the messages that are being snooped, when you are in a shared state, sometimes you see some broadcast done by others. According to the broadcast, you may have to perform some update that is being required. Then, if you see that you are in shared state and you see a read request, Similarly, if you get a write request, then accordingly something that is being sent, you have to understand what is being sent. Similarly, when you are in the modified state also, you have to perform the broadcast and corresponding update. Any read or write request, you have to act it accordingly. So, just a kind of state transition that is being told. Now, let us learn about a new protocol known as MESI protocol. It is a very standard protocol, standard cache coherence protocol that is being used. Let us try to understand what these are. So, it is typically used a multiprocessor cache invalidate protocol based upon the snooping concept. It is typically used in write back caches. What do you mean by write back? Main memory is not updated until a dirty cache block is being displaced or evicted out. This works on the concept of you have multiple readers and only one writer is allowed. So, at any given point of time, one can write. At any given point in time, many can read, but whenever a writer is there, nobody can read. So, this is called single writer and multiple reader for any given cache block. So, let us try to understand what is MESI protocol. MESI stands for four different states that we are talking, modified state, exclusive state, shared state and invalid state. So, a cache block can be in one of these four states, typically represented using two bits. Modified state means a cache line has been modified, it is dirty and the content of this particular cache block is different from that of main memory and this is the only cache to copy. So, main memory content is different, the cache to copy is the only one and that is dirty block. Exclusive copy means cache line is same as that of main memory. So, it is not dirty, it is a clean block, 
but this is the only cached copy main memory has a copy so main memory value is same as the cached copy and only one cache currently holds this copy so to understand the difference between modified and exclusive modified means only one cache block can be in modified state at any given point of time for a given address if that is been kept with many only one would be in the modified state this shows that processor which holds a block in the modified state can performs write on it it carries the latest copy it's a dirty copy the main memory copy and the cache copy which is in the modified state they are not consistent they are not coherent blocks main memory copy is the old block the latest one the modified one is available in the cache so the state m represents it's a modified block kept only in this cache the state e means it's a clean block so processor first one a processor p1 wanted to read for a cache get a copy from main memory put it in processor p1 that's it since if no other processor is currently holding it then p1 is holding this particular block in an exclusive mode but it is not dirty that is the difference between modified and exclusive now the third state is known as the shared state this is also same as main memory but there can be multiple caches holding the same block and they all will keep it in the shared fashion so the difference of exclusive and shared is exclusive means only one will have that block shared means many will have that particular block and what about invalid invalid means this particular data is uh, not present in this block so it's just like your cache line is invalid now let us try to see what are the the transition that is been done a cache line same like cache block changes state on memory access events what are the events whenever there is a local processor so the local processor to which a cache controller is connected if that performs a read request or a write request accordingly sometimes the state may change second one due to the bus activity every cache controller is snooping on the bus so when the cache blocks change affected only if there is an address matching happens so a cache block controller which essentially have access to the cache blocks which takes care of the transition of the states the state get changed either due to a local processor activity or due to the activity happening through the bus which are itself triggered by activity done by some other processor so when the local processor does an activity then also my state may change when other processor do does an activity then it will trigger a broadcast message and this cache controller is snooping on the broadcast and if the address is relevant then also the cache block state may change now let us try to understand what this messi protocol does so the operations that is been done in a messi protocol can be defined by looking at what you do on read hit read miss write hit or a write miss so processor wanted to perform a read operation tag is matching then it's known as a read hit If tag is not matching it's a read miss similarly processor wanted to perform a write operation tag matching it's called hit tag not matching it is known as a miss so how do you define all these movements with respect to four of these transition and for the states that is been defined so we have four states m e s and i and then we have four possible cases a read hit a read miss a write hit or a write miss so what would you do on all these cases four states are there for operations that is been defining and some of the operations are not valid for certain states so this whole is thing is been represented in a state transition diagram before going to the state transition diagram let us try to understand what are the possible combination of operations that we have let us take one by one so first we are going to talk about read hits now when do we say that we have a read hit the tag is matching that means the state of the block cannot be i the tag is matching and the block is in m state or if it is in s state or it can be in e state now we have to see what will you do when you are in each of these three states so when the block is in any of these states m modified exclusive or shared that means whatever copy that you have that's the correct value that you have if the state is mean m means 
you are encountering a read miss on a block that is m that means the latest value is available with you even though it was modified locally that is exactly what you want so a previous write happened because of that the state is modified and now you are going to perform a read so you will get the modified data if it is e or s that means this is the shared copy if it is s if it is exclusive means you have the only one copy in all these cases be it m e or s return the value and there is no state change that is been required so a read hit on m state e state or s state return the value to the processor no other operation nothing need to be broadcasted in the bus no state change also happens now let us go for a read miss in the case of a read miss that means we have to see what are the operations in this case you encounter a read miss when you encounter a read miss tag is not matching that means you have a, an invalid state your tag is not matching case 1 no other copy is there in the cache none of the other cache have the copy so processor make a bus request to memory since no cache has it the value is available only in memory value is read in the local cache since you are the very first one going to access since there is nobody is going to have it make the state to e so this basically looks for a transition from i to e the block was initially i and now you are going to make it as e now case 2 you are encountering a read miss but one cache has the e copy somebody has an exclusive copy so the processor make a bus request the snooping cache will put the copy on the bus so somebody who is in e will come to know that somebody else is also going to ask so in this case since e the cache with e state knows the value memory request is been abandoned so there is no need to bring from that so local processor cache the value so who will supply the e will supply the value and both lines are set to s so initially somebody was invalid he become s somebody was in exclusive he also will become s so now both the cache blocks initially one cache has e copy mean no one else has only one cache has it now a new cache wants the same thing both of them at this point will continue in s state so it's like sharing both of them are now having the latest copy now i'm going to have a read miss on a scenario where multiple caches have the s copy so processor make a bus request to memory one cache put the copy into the bus so whoever get the access they one of them will put it accordingly memory access is been abandoned so there is no need to bring from memory because many of them have the latest copy so the local processor now cache the value so based upon who gives the bus it will get the value local copy is set to kiss all other copies remain in s so there was a miss by someone his state will move from i to s all others who are in s they will continue in s itself one of the shared block who have access to the bus will supply the block that's the way how it is been done so we have now laid about three cases now case four you are going to encounter a read miss and this one cache has it in m copy so this scenario is one particular processor wanted to have a cache block for a reading operation so it's a read miss but there is only one guy who has the copy but that is in m state that's a modified state that is the latest one so memory value is not correct so processor make a bus request to memory the snooping cache put the copy on the bus so the guy who is in m state will put the value in the bus so the memory access is been abandoned so the source m value is copied back into memory so in this case memory is abandoned so whoever is keeping in m they will perform a write back because the block is going to be evicted so local processor caches the value this is what i told mesi protocol works on write back policy so you have a block that is in modified state now this particular block cannot be keeping in that it will perform a write back operation so local copy is tagged into the s so and the source value move from m to s so somebody was keeping a block in the modified state now somebody else is asking the block that keeps in modified state will supply the data it will change its state from m to s and the new one who got the copy that also will tag this particular block as s now let us talk about write hit 
what are the po various possibilities? So, the first simple possibility is one cache has an M copy. So, block is exclusive and already dirty. Update local cache value, no state change. So, when you have a write hit, means you are the one who is keeping it in M state. There is no need to tell others. It is already dirty. You get, you are going to update on top of that. No state change required. Write it on. Case 2, one cache has an E copy. So, if one cache has an E copy, that is the local one that you have, it is a write hit. So, you got a write hit on a cache block which is in E state, you update the value, state has to be changed from E state to M state, no other transition is required. Third scenario is, you encounter a write hit and several caches are in S copy. So, you are also in S state. There are many other also in S state. So, processor broadcast and invalidate. That is why it is a cache invalidate protocol. So, what it does is one of the processor is telling even though we all have the same cache copy, I am going to perform a write on it. So, kindly invalidate this. This is this message. So, all the snooping processors who have the copy in the S state, they will move from S to I, from a shared state to an invalid state. The local cache value is updated and whoever wanted to perform the write, its initial state was S, now it is moving to M. So, let us try to understand what are these three possibilities that we talked in the case of a write hit. So, write hit can occur in a scenario where processor gives an address, the tag is matching and the block is present. Now, if the block is present, there can be three possibilities. One is the block is present in M state. M state means only one processor has it and that is the processor what I am talking. It is not the case I encounter a write hit and somebody else have an M state. That is not possible. If somebody else have an M state, then I will not get a hit at all because my state would be invalid. So, the moment I know that it is a write hit on a block that is M, then I am the only processor who have it. Okay? So, one cache has the M copy. So, in this case what we will do? Perform the operation. It is a modified block. I am performing only a write on top of that. So, perform one more write on it. No other bus transaction required. What if I encounter on a write hit on a block which is in E state? The moment I tell it is an E state, the concept is simple. This is the only block, but it is a clean block. Now, I am going to make an update. So, the moment I am going to perform a write operation, move your transition state from E to M. The third one is I got a write hit, but my state is S. That means, somebody else also may have an S. This has to be handled very carefully. In this case, the moment I am going to perform a write, at this point onwards, nobody else should keep the copy. This is an invalidate cache coherence protocol. So, first is I send a cache invalidate message to all. They all will make their state from S state to the I state. And hereafter, what I will do, whatever is my S, I am going to elevate it to M. And that is the way how I am going to handle this. So, these are the three cases in which a write hit is been handled. Now, let us go into the last operation that is known as a write miss operation. Case 1, no other copies are there. So, you are in invalid state, value is read from the main memory to the local cache, a simple cache write miss operation, value updated and the local copy is made to M. So, any write operation that you do, ultimately you have to work with M only. So, if the state is not M, you have to make it M. Now, in case 2, other copies are there, they can be either in E state or some of them can be in S state as well. So, you are going to encounter a write miss and you realize that this particular block is kept by someone, either by only one guy, that means it is in E, or it is kept by many, then they are in S. So, the value from memory to the local cache, how do you read it? So, you put a best transaction telling that RWITM. So, read with an intent to modify. I wanted to read the cache block from the main memory, but my intention is to modify it. That is what I essentially I am telling. I wanted to write on it. So, the message that is being used is read the block from the main memory with an intention to modify. So, all the snooping processors sees this. They are telling that somebody wanted to have a block for writing and they all are having a copy of it either as an E copy or as S copy. They all will make it to I in valid state because the moment main memory supplies the value to this particular requesting processor, thereafter anybody keeping that copy in either E or S does not make sense those they have to be invalidated. So, the invalidate message is nothing but it is RWITM message it goes, then automatically everybody will invalidate. So, the local copy is now updated and that is now made to 
m. Simple. Once you get the block, make it as m. So you can perform a write only if the block is m. In previous case also we have seen make from i to m. In this case also you make from i to m, but all others will make the value from s or e back into i. Now the third case is there exists another block. So you encounter a write miss, you don't have it, but somebody else is keeping us in the m state. This is very critical. m state means somebody else have the latest version, the dirty version of it. So processor issues a bus transaction, same like this, rwitm read with an intent to modify. So snooping processor sees this. What is the snooping processor? That snooping processor is keeping it in m mode. It blocks this request. So memory should not supply it because I have the latest copy. It takes the control over the bus. So now main memory cannot put it because the bus controller is been snapped by that processor whose cat state is in M. So what it does using the bus, it write back the copy to the main memory. So the dirty block will be returned to main memory and then that block will make its state from M to Y. And then what happens? The original processor has to reissue the request because the request was abandoned. It comes to know somebody abandoned it. Somebody is using the bus. So when the processor used the bus, the latest copy will get updated in the main memory. Now again when I put a request, now everybody is in invalid state. So it's a simple no copy case of a scenario, means the local processor doesn't have the cache block. So the value is read from memory and that value is put to M. So let us try to understand what happens in a messy protocol when there is a local write miss. And you see that you have a miss, but the block is kept by somebody in the M state. You put up a write request for the address. The snooping processor will see that. They know that somebody else wanted to perform a write on it and the block is kept by me in the modified state. So I have the latest value. So this has to reach there. How do I do that? It is not an update protocol. So what I do is the updated value that I have, this value has to go to main memory. So if the request go to main memory, main memory will supply it, which is an old data. So that request should not reach main memory. The request is abandoned. Then I capture the bus, I will write back this dirty block into the main memory. Now the main memory is correct. Whatever value I have, I move to invalid state. Now the request is being sent again by the initiated processor and then it's just like a miss goes to main memory and main memory value is being supplied. The block will reach the requested processor that is being kept in M state, perform the write. So in this way, we have seen what we will do on a read hit, on a read miss, on a write hit, and on a write miss. So in the messy finite state machine, description of all state operation using a state transition diagram. So what the diagram shows, the diagram shows what happens to a cache block in the processor. Memory access made by a processor, typically your read hits and write hits are the events that are being depicted in the state diagram. And memory access made by other processor that result in a bus transaction which are observed by the local cache. So how do state transition occur? Any memory access initiated by the local processor, any memory access initiated by the other processors and in some cases, this initiation will result in a bus transaction and you snoop this bus transaction. Sometimes it can be memory read operation, sometimes it can be a invalidate operation, sometimes it can be a write, sorry, read request with an intention to modify. So these are the three memory transactions that you see. So this is the first portion of it. So these are the four states. We can see that M, E, S and I. These are the four states that you have. And then in each of the states, you need to talk about what happens upon a read hit, what happens upon a miss or whatever. So typically when you have a miss, then you are already in the I state. Your data is not matching. So let us try to understand one by one. And you have to see that the squares, what you put it on the edges, it shows that that is the activity that you put it on the bus. So there exists a read miss. So you put up a memory read request in the bus. And because of that, your state moves from I state into the S state. Now, when you are in S state, when you get read hits, you continue in S. There is no problem. Nothing is being sent into the bus. That's why I am not seeing any box here in this edge. So it's a local affair, any read hits on an S block, shared block. Now the other one is I am going to perform a write miss. Write miss means it is memory read is one request, memory write is another request or request with an intention to modify. 
So that happens typically on a right miss. So in that case, my state moves from I state into an M state. When you are in M state, even if it is a read hit or write hit, nothing has been sent on to the bus. It's strictly local affair. You continue in state M itself. When you get a right hit on an S state, then you send an invalidate request that has been typically coming in the bus because everybody else should know that it's a right hit that I am going to perform. Everybody has to invalidate. So an invalidate message goes into bus and the messages that is broadcasted in the bus, the rectangles that you see, it is meant for others, those who snoop. So I put an invalidate request for others and my state is moving from S into M. That is the state transition. Now, if someone is reading for the very first time, then my state is moving from I to E. In E, any read hits is head same like an S. In E, when I perform a right hit, I need not send it to others. This state is not required because I am the only one copy that I have. So, simply changing my state from E into the M. So, if you look at all these, you are able to see what are the transitions. So, at S, you can have read hits or write hits. At E also, you can have read hits and write hits. At M also, you are having read hits or write hits. And whenever there is a miss, if this is not kept by anyone, and if it is a read miss, then I go to E. If it is kept by someone, then I go to S. If it is a write miss, whatever be the case, then I go to my state to M. So, this is the state transition that you have. Now, this is the diagram that you see from the snooping perspective. So, the previous diagram is what will the cache controller do based upon the local request by the processor, by the host processor, local processor. It can be read hit, read miss, write hit and write miss on different states. Now, in this case, cache controller observes what is happening in the bus. Now, when you are in a shared state and you see an invalidate request for a block that is relevant to you, somebody is telling invalidate this block, then I move from shared state to the invalid state. So, this is your S state. Now, I am already in the shared state and you see somebody else is reading, I continue in that. Even though it is a read request, I continue in S state itself. Now, I am in E state, I see that somebody wanted to perform a read, then my E state will become S. So, hereafter there are more copies that is being cached. So, I am not the exclusive one. So, I move into my shared state. When I am in E state, I saw an RWITM request. That means, somebody wanted this particular block for a write operation. Then in that case, from E, the state will move to I. Similarly, when you are in M, somebody else wanted the same block for a write operation. There also, you move your state from M to I. Now, when you are in M and somebody else wanted to perform the read operation on it, then you move your state from M back into S. So, in this case, you see what are the state transition based upon the various states wherein you are in and the broadcast message is applicable to the block that is under discussion. Now, in two cases, we can see that there exists a kind of a dot. That means, in these two cases, I perform right back into the main memory. When you are in the modified state, somebody else wanted that block for a write operation. So, since you have the latest copy, you write back. That is what they see. You write back into the main memory and main memory will supply the latest copy. When you are in the modified state and somebody wanted to perform a read operation on it, then they should read the latest value. So, what do you do? You are again writing back into the main memory and from main memory, they will get the latest copy and then you are moving in from, from the modified state into the shared state. So, these are the transitions. So, just to summarize, we need to understand what are the, the transitions that you have. So, two types of transition, one based upon local processor one, that is the previous diagram that we have seen and this diagram shows what are the activity that the cache controller should do so that some of the states will get changed and sometimes you may have to perform a write operation depending upon the bus activity. So, the cache controller decides the state transition movement from one state to another depending upon the request from the local processor be it key read requests or a write request it can be hit or miss accordingly transactions are done states are changed and some transactions are put in bus. Similarly, some of the transactions already coming through the bus when I snoop it may be of my interest accordingly some state transitions has to be done and sometimes I may have to perform a write back as well. 
So now let us look into a MOSI cash coherence protocol. It's a new one, MOESI. So apart from the normal MESI protocol states, there is one more fifth state which is known as the honor state or owned state, which represent the data is both in modified as well as in the shared one. So in the previous one, what we have to see that always the, the modified data is being supplied from the main memory. So main memory copy into the cache is going to be time consuming. What if you have a mechanism such that the modified value is being supplied? It's a kind of a write update. So when you have this, this avoids the need to write the modified data back. So the write back operation to the main memory can be avoided before sharing it. The write back may be deferred. So when you have an owner state, I can avoid that. Now direct cache to cache transfer of data is possible when you work with MOESI protocol. In the previous case, when a cache has the latest value that you are in an M state, your value is first written back into main memory and main memory supplies the data. In this case, cache to cache transfer is possible. A cache with the data in the modified state can supply that data to another reader without transferring into this memory. So owned cache lines must respond to a snoop request with the data. That is the role of the owned cache line. So let us try to see what is the difference between Messi and Mossy. So this will show what is there on the left side will show what are the potential blocks. So when a block is in M, no other block can be in M, no other block can be in E, no other block holding this address can be in M, E or S, it should be only I is possible. When a block is in E, no other block can hold the same address in M state, E state or S state, only I is possible. When a block is holding something under S, then some blocks will be in I, some other blocks can be in S and when somebody is in I, then many other blocks, there can be blocks which can be in M or even E state is allowed, S state is allowed, some other block can be I. So this will show us that what are the combinations. Now when you come to MOESI, when you are in M, all others will be in I. When you are in O, somebody can be in S, somebody can be in I. When you are in E, all others are in I. When you are in S, somebody can be in O, somebody can be in S, somebody can be in I. When you are in I, then one possibility is somebody can be in M state or somebody can be in O state or not AND or somebody can be in E state, somebody can be in S, some can be in I. So this gives you an idea of what are the possibilities. Now this is the state transition diagram of M, O, E, S, I, M, O, E, S, I protocol and there are two more state that has been there that is only for implementation purpose. Let us try to understand what happens in this. The idea of MOESI protocol is when you request for a data, if the latest copy of the data, even if it is a dirty copy, if it is available with someone, they should forward it. So I should not go to main memory and take it. First I should put up some special request which only propagate through the bus the main memory will not respond. So I need to have two separate messages. One is give me the data if someone else have or give me the data from the main memory. So how do you implement it? We do not know whether somebody else have a copy or not. So we have some timeout mechanism. So let us try to see that. So when you are in an invalid state, you wanted to perform a read request, you put up the read request text. This is going into the bus. That state is known as ST you are in a state where you are waiting for somebody's reply. So if you get a reply, that means you are going into an S state. So if you get a reply means somebody else have the copy and then you move to S state. If you are not getting a reply, then you are probing, you are again putting up a request. At that time if you get a reply, that is also fine, you move into the S state. Again you do once more time, still you are not able to get a reply, then that means nobody else have the copy, that means you are the only one, you can make it as an exclusive. So anything from I to E, this transition cannot be done quickly because you have to wait whether somebody else is holding the copy or not. 
So that can happen first you wait, first you move into a state ST, wait for some time. So first if you get, if you get a reply, directly move to S, that means someone else is already there. Again if you get a reply, you go to this, two times of you after probing. So you do a probing and then you are still you are not able to get, then I have to read from the main memory. This is called the process of reading from main memory and make it E. So there is no transition from I to E direct, I to E happens through the other two smaller sub transitions. So if you get a reply when you are in ST or SC directly you are moving to S. Now when you are already in E and then there can be a case wherein you are supposed to go to S that is been not shown here. Now how do you do? What is the status of? So when you are already in a modified state and then you come to know that you wanted to evict the data, then you can evict the data during with the help of a write back operation. Here you have the owner state that is there. So when the owner state also if somebody is going to perform a write back operation, then you know, if somebody wanted the data, then from owner state you move to the invalid state by evicting it out. So I am the reason for eviction out, the block is being selected as a victim block, I have to evict out, write back the data. So from M state also when you are evicting, you have to write back the data. In I state when somebody is requesting for a write miss, then I directly move from I to M. Okay. And then here we have a state when you are in owner and somebody is looking for a write operation. If you are in the owner state and then you are moving into the modified state that is called the write update that you have. When you are in M, any read or write request, it is a local affair. When you are in O, if it is a read request, it is a local affair. If it is a write request, I have to move from O to M. That is what you see. When you are in shared, any request of reading, that is perfectly fine. If there is any write request that is going to come, then from S, I am going into an M state. So the owner state is nothing but when you are in owner state, whenever there is a read request happening to others, it is fine. Whenever someone, when you make a write on it, then you go to modify. When someone wants the data, then I can supply the updated value that has been there. So we are coming to the end of uh, this cache coherence protocol. So just to summarize what we did. We learned about snoop based cache coherence protocol. We introduced the concept of what is cache invalidate protocol and then what is cache update protocol. We learned about the concept of having a state for each of the cache block and then we found out those events by which the state transition happens. We learned about initially the modified state, the shared state, the invalid state, the MSI. Then we learned about MESI cache coherence protocol and later we have seen what is MOESI which is an update protocol, MOESI is a cache update protocol whereas MESI is a cache invalidate protocol, both are used with write back caches. So in this way in a multi core processor scenario, multiple processors working, they have their own caches on a shared memory, once you work with shared data, then this is the way how you make sure that your data is consistent. So with this we come to the end of snoop based cache coherence design and the protocols. I hope you got an understanding about how memory consistency and coherency can be maintained when multiple processors work together. Thank you.